Hi, this is a video I wish I were not making. We're nearing the end of August and I have to ask you the question. Did you think they would try it again? Did you think that we learned what we should have during three and a half years of pandemic? I am stunned. I am astonished, I'm disappointed. And I guess at some level I feel a little belligerent. I am tired of being bullied. What am I talking about specifically? You've probably seen it in the news. We're seeing as kids go back to school, a bubbling up of articles and news reports about schools and colleges reinstituting mask mandates, about colleges demanding that students be vaccinated in order for them to attend classes. I am stunned. I am absolutely stunned. In the wake of what we're seeing right now, there was a recent article written by Dan Balls and Clara Ence Morse on August 18th, 2023 in politics. And it said, American democracy is cracking. These forces help explain why. And in this article, they make these statements. Many Americans can agree on this. They believe the political system is broken. They aren't wrong. Government and politicians seem incapable of achieving consensus. What's broken is the will of those in power to see past the divisions enough to reach compromise. The failure has multiple origins, including a collapse of trust in institutions. The deepening polarization of the political system. Widen the difference between red and blue states, a growing urban-rural divide, and greater hostility among individuals towards political opponents. Then we get to the subtopics. Distrust in government. Polarization. And it says, tribalism shapes much of political behavior. We have a college near Atlanta that has come out and said that masks will be worn and are mandated in classrooms. I never thought I'd be doing another video talking about masks. Just recently, an article, August 21st, 2023, within the last couple of days, Epic Times, the title, it's written by Megan Redshaw, Secret letter to CDC, top epidemiologist suggests agency misrepresented scientific data to support mask narrative. This is what this article says. Documents recently obtained from the National Institute of Health suggest public health officials used inaccurate information and misrepresented medical research to advance their policy objective that masks prevent severe COVID-19 and, se and virus transmission despite opposing scientific evidence received from experts. In a recently obtained letter sent in November of 2021, almost two years ago, by Mike Osterholm, he informed the CDC it was promoting flawed data and excluding data that did not reinforce their narrative. The letter warned the agency, the CDC, that misrepresenting data on trusted websites jointly created by the CDC and Infectious Disease Society of America would damage the credibility of science. Dr. Osterholm's letter said, we believe the information and recommendations as provided may actually put an individual at increased risk of becoming infected with SARS-CoV-2 and for them to experience a serious or even life-threatening infection. In his letter to the CDC, Mr. Ostholm asked the CDC and the Infectious Disease Society to remove the suggestion that masking prevents severe COVID-19 from its website. It goes on. 
This is astonishing. Mr. Ostholm said, the November 2020 Cochrane Review cited states this, compared with wearing no mask, wearing a mask may make little to no difference in how many people caught a flu-like illness. Then there's an organization called the Freedom of the Functional Go Government Intuitive, in, excuse me, the Functional Government Initiative, the FGI. They obtained some of these documents through the Freedom of Information Act. And they said this, the story of official masking guidance should trouble the American public. Recall that Dr. Fauci at first said there was no need for masks. It goes on to say this, that Dr. Osterholm and his colleagues felt compelled to raise concerns about cherry-picked data and the danger it presented to the credibility of public health officials and the health of the public says that something was deeply dysfunctional in these agencies. Friends, there's an article in 2019 in JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, that talks about what was found in regards to influenza virus illnesses. Now, influenza virus particles are somewhere around 0.1 microns, 0.08 to 0.120, so average about 0.1 microns. That's approximately the same size that a COVID-19 particle is. That's 50 times smaller than the typical opening or pore size on a three-ply surgical mask or a cotton mask. There's a recent video report, a news report with Dr. Mike Osterholm from Minnesota, where he makes it clear that there should be a distinction made between the cotton and the surgical masks and their if efficacy in regards to filtration rate and what they can do, and an N95 mask. He talks about the value of an N95 mask and says that this would make the difference, potentially. But he's clearly admonishing those who lump all these masks into one and say, a mask is a mask is a mask. It's not that way. We need to realize that in the early part of the pandemic, both Dr. Fauci and Dr. Osterholm made comments denigrating the value of the mask wearing in the everyday person. Later on, they switched their story. Then in November of 2021, we've got Mike Osterholm writing to the CDC saying, you're overstating your case. This is astonishing. The science, the physics, point out that the particle size of COVID-19 viruses or influenza viruses is similar. They're both RNA respiratory viruses. We have seen studies for decades that have demonstrated that masks will not necessarily prevent someone from contracting influenza. But amidst all of this, we now have colleges telling students, you're going to be wearing masks in class. We've got states and we've got countries that chose to go a different path. And study after study has indicated that wearing a mask will not prevent you from getting COVID-19. And then we shift gears and we, we talk about, I hate to say it, but we talk about the vaccines. And we see some places saying, you're not going to be able to go to school or you're not going to get hired unless you're compliant with the vaccine mandate. And then we have the terminology. When it comes to vaccines, you can see some studies that'll say 70 or 80% of Americans are fully vaccinated. What does fully vaccinated mean? As a physician, if, if I tell the patient, listen, you're up to date, you're fully vaccinated against tetanus or diphtheria, I would mean that they'd had the initial vaccine series for diphtheria and tetanus and that they've gotten their every 10-year booster within the last 10 years. That would be fully vaccinated. I would sort of imply that it's fully vaccinated and up to date. But no, that's not what the language means. You can look at the data yourself. Whether fully vaccinated includes 70 or 80% of Americans, what I can tell you this is if you're completely vaccinated in accordance with the CDC recommendations, including a booster bivalent shot. Now you're talking in adults in America, one out of five. One out of five 
Americans over the age of 18, one out of five, have been vaccinated fully as well as the beginning series, uh, the booster, the bivalent. If you have done your homework and stayed up to date, it's somewhere around half a dozen shots that would put you at completely up to date and fully vaccinated if you're over the age of 65. It's not easy to find out how many Americans have gotten six COVID vaccines. If we start reporting the, the sum of America and talk about all the way down to five years of age, then it's even lower than that one in five. It's lower than 20%. I'm astonished. We're seeing the new election season really ramp up. In a couple days, we've got the first debate on the Republican side of the aisle for presidential candidates. It's in 15 months, a big election for America. And now we're seeing masks being brought to the front. We're seeing statements that might represent innuendos being put out there. We're seeing vaccines, which are terribly confusing. Uh, basically still the requirement or you can't go to college here. Are they going to do it again? Did we learn enough the first time around? Folks, there is only one way around this, and that is for each of us to be engaged. We've got to stand our ground. I wrote a book. And we released it a couple of years ago. It said, we've been played. I wrote the book out of deep and compelling conviction. And on page 165 in this book, I said, if the government can suspend your rights anytime it sees fit, you don't have rights. You have privileges. On page 160, excuse me, on page 159, I made this comment. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito made the following comments on November 2020. In November 2020, Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito made the following statement. The pandemic has resulted in previously unimaginable restrictions on individual liberty. It is an indisputable statement of fact. We have never before seen restrictions as severe, extensive, and prolonged as those experienced for most of 2020. That's why I wrote this book. I am absolutely blown away that I'm talking about masks and vaccines in a video today in late August of 2023. I don't know what kind of consequences. I will suffer because of this video. But please ask yourself the question, would they do it again? Did we learn enough? Are we willing to stand our ground? We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. That's why America was born. I am unbelievably stunned, disappointed, and astonished that we're seeing this go on. Late August, 2023. How much of this is political posturing? Why don't you get to decide? We have this back and forth discussion regarding masks with some of the top people in the country in regards to name recognition. Tony Fauci, Mike Osterholm, certainly these names have been mentioned very often. And we hear things like, don't wear masks, wear masks. Oh, by the way, cotton and surgical masks aren't the same as the N95 masks. But oh, by the way, Look at the JAMA article in 2019, and even the N95 masks fall short of preventing you from getting influenza. This is the kind of discussion we're getting. What's clear is that the science is not established. 
It's still emerging. But in the meantime, don't you think people are picking and choosing? You're not, as American citizens, allowed to be the skeptic that you might naturally be. You may well be censored. The Constitution isn't being used to stand up for your rights. The research that for 20 years stood strong has been cast out the window. Academia has absolutely stepped away from the conversation. The media is promoting their own perspective. Folks, will they do it again? Gee whiz. I think it's a foregone conclusion. They are doing it again. We've been played. 